the first part of the two-part aspect in regards to this little whiny baby that I had met named Kevin at the Stoney LaRue concert who had thrown a little temper tantrum, completely caused a whole bunch of problems, wouldn't leave me alone throughout the entire evening, and then later on is where I'm explaining. So today is the 25th of November in 2020. This event happened back in 2013 in March, uh, the weekend of the 22nd or the 23rd. And after the whole corset popping incident, um, <laughs> I was informed that Kevin had purposefully done that, not just to me, but had done that to a whole bunch of females. Anytime he had gone out with a bunch of people or even by himself, he would purposefully find a female that was sitting by themselves or standing by themselves, scope out the situation, and then go after them and do everything that he could to make them feel absolutely uncomfortable. And every time up until one female who put a quart of drink in his face, up until me, nobody had ever stood up to him and every female had cried when running away because of after everything that he would do throughout the evening. And so I was explained that after Kevin was sent to go get his wife, you know, the two beers and stuff. Well, a few weeks later, I get told that Kevin wouldn't shut up and wouldn't stop being a little baby about the situation. In my opinion, I think that that's my opinion, but, you know, I'm probably not the only one. So, in that... I am told a couple weeks later that Kevin is still running his mouth at the airplane mechanics school. And I don't know if Christine from the Jade Wolf Coven had been a part of the group, but she did look like one of the females, older albeit from the last time I saw her in 2004 or 2005, but nonetheless kind of looked like her with the group. Anyway, that's a whole other ball of wax. So, I am repeatedly told about how Kevin is temper tantrum this and temper tantrum that. Okay, fine. I'm, I don't like having my name run through the mud. And I will defend my own honor, especially if nobody else is willing to. Um, I should have had to, but fine. All right, I'll handle it. So, I show up to the barbecue place that everybody's at. I walk in. And, or I, I'm sorry, I drive in, and before I go to walk into the area, Jesse Leroy Hoover Jr. runs out to the car where I'm at. And I get out of the car, and I'm just like, yeah, so what's going on? I mean, I'm kind of dealing with a whole bunch of stuff right now. But what? What's this guy running his mouth about? And Jesse's like, oh, he's saying it again, and he's doing this, and he's doing that. I'm like, you're not just, like, egging on a situation, are you? He's like, no, 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 he's doing this, he's doing this. So I walk up to the area of the front patio of this barbecue place where there's a bunch of picnic tables, and there's a group around. And Kevin is sitting on one side of the bench, just yip, 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 yip. I walk up, and I was like, oh, is that right? And... Kevin looks up and goes, oh, oh my God, what are you doing here? And I look and I'm just like, well, you know, I heard, let's sit down, I heard that you have put me in my place. Well, this group of people, one of them goes, well, what do you, what do you, what are you, you here for? And, oh, I heard that he had a, 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 a situation at a Stony LaRue concert. A couple of them were like, oh yeah, he put some short red hair female with a bunch of tattoos in her place and they're and they're going on and i'm stand i stand back up and i start you know taking my jacket off because it's texas it's a little warm i was like oh hmm. so <coughs> a, a short red hair female a bunch of tattoos you put her in her place 
Is that right? Now so what happens? And groups, like, they keep going for a few minutes. And, huh, that's a short red hair. Do you know what type of red hair? And one of them goes, really bright red hair. And I'm like, really, really bright? Like, really, really bright? Like, how really bright? And then they, oh, did he put, no, 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 see, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm here to clarify that. Yeah, I, I, I'm here to clarify that, because I don't like my name being run in the mud. So, hey, Kevin, why don't you tell me what you've been telling all these people? Huh? Why don't you tell me that? And Kevin starts scooting off to the side, and he's like, well, you know, I mean, I just, I told them, I, I, I told them, and <laughs> very calmly, I mean, if I could lean against the wall, I would have. Now, you told them what? What did you tell them? The guy across the way, he's like, what is this about? He got all poopy just in the garage. It's like, oh, no, no, no. I just am here to clarify what's going on. Because he's saying one thing. I know the truth. And there are people who were there who know the truth who weren't speaking up. I have a problem when it comes to people not speaking up and telling the truth when they know the truth. That's just not lie. Guy kind of, uh, oh my god, okay, well this should be funny. <laughs> yeah, if that, that's what you think. Do I amuse you? No, I'm not saying that you amuse me at all. No, 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 I'm not saying that at all. Okay, good. So, Kevin, why don't you tell me? Tell me in front, as you've told all these people, about how you put me into my place. You tell me that. And Kevin looks over and he's scooted, he has scooted up against the corner, so this kind of works right here, against the wall, and he's like, I'm just... I mean, I, d I did. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> so I look over and I'm like, well, why don't you tell me how you put me into my place? I am quite confused. Because last I remember, I told you that from the way you dance, I could tell that your wife wears a strap on. And at that point, everybody else is <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Oh, oh, I'm not done yet. So, the last thing that I remember is I told you that I could tell by how you danced that your wife wears a strap on. And from the big old bubba that was humping your head and just lifting his leg while you were on the floor, you know, tying your shoelace, that you seem to be accustomed to that. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm, I'm confused as to how that's putting me in my place. Kevin, he's just, oh, well, you know, you're, I did it. <laughs> Look over there. Uh, Kevin, you did what? You lied or you think you put me in my place when in reality I put you in your place? He just looks over and he says, um, uh, 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 I, 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 uh, I put you in your place. <laughs> and so I just... <laughs> actually started laughing. At that point, the group started getting as close to the wooden fence as they could. Like, if they could have pushed the fence backwards a little bit more, that's what they seem to be trying to do. Like, oh, she don't look like you put her in her place. She's here. Like, I don't know. Like, I think they did that map all by themselves. Oh, um, because the fact that I showed up, it was like, so, yeah, in that regard. And so, do tell me. Tell me how, what is it that you said that makes you think you put me in my place after what you said about my courses? Go ahead.
And Kevin, he's just, well, well, you know, I just did, and that's all you need to know, and I just did. I told you. I told you. <laughs> so pretend this coffee is a, a basket of french fries in between Kevin and I on the table, and so, and, it's, and, the, and the french fries are in front of him, and I just pick up one, and I'm like, really? I'm just quite confused as to how, and then Kevin looks, did you just take one of my french fries? <laughs> yes, I did, and I'm going to take another one, so why don't you tell me about how you put me in my place? I'm all ears right now. Come on. And if you would like to attempt to, like, explain the actual truth, I'd actually prefer that. I prefer the truth. However, if you want to try to continue lying, I'm just going to put this out there. The fact that you have scooted against the wall and have, you know, the fear of God in your face, because you should be, after your wife told you that I have permission to devour your soul, which I did that night, I would truly like to know how it is you think you put me in my place when I'm here clarify you said being from Louisiana as a Cajun that you had never met anybody from New Jersey before and you wanted to well now you have now you are so Attend another French fry. <laughs> Tell me, how is it that you put me in place? Dip in a little bit of ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Waited a little bit longer. And for some reason, Kevin couldn't tell me how he put me in that place. Because he didn't, <laughs> obviously. So, after a few more minutes, you know, okay, well, I'll, I'll allow you to um, finish your little lunch, and um, I'm going to go do what I need to do, and don't you ever lie about me again, okay? You don't want to do that. You have a good day. Now look at the guy who's across the table, and he's just sitting like there like this, like, oh my god, you just completely did that. And I'll look, I'm like, yeah, because I'm me. I'll look at the group of people that are left standing, and they're just like, Ooh. <laughs> I'll look over, I'm like, you guys good? And they're, yeah, we're good, so I stand up and grab my jacket. Start putting it back on. Oh, and by the way, Kevin, don't you be rude to police officers again. All right? That'd be a, be a smart idea, especially since they were sent there to save you after they found out who I am. Should have been nicer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And all they needed to know is that I am born and raised in New Jersey. I mean, I'm much kinder, obviously, but going off of a stereotype. So, breaking that stereotype and defending the police officers at Cowboys, um, you should really be much kinder to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and do not lie. It's a very bad idea. Especially when it comes to me. Don't ever lie. Another person. Anything else need to be clarified and the rest of the group? No. 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 It's just going to look all over anywhere except for where <laughs> we're at. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day. You have a good one. And the guy's still sitting there. He's like, oh, okay. Sure, that's great. <laughs> Kevin is still like it. Or does that mean you're leaving? Does that mean you're leaving? Does that mean you're leaving? <laughs> uh, look at
go, I go, yes, I'm leaving on my own accord. I'm leaving by my own love. Not because she put me in my place. Just so you know. Okay. So then I walk past the group. <laughs> go to my car and Jesse Lee Hoover Jr. runs after me and he goes, oh my god Susan, he's like really freaked out that you showed up. And I turn around and look at him and I'm like, yeah, well, you know. Clear my name. So. <laughs> Don't lie about me. Pretty simple. <laughs> But also don't single out females who don't have anybody with them at a club. I mean, it really isn't rocket science. A female has every right to go out just as much as a male does. And to purposefully go after a female who is not involved in a relationship out by herself, that doesn't make you a man. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Go check out my website. You guys have a good one.